Okay, the model is selected. So I'm clicking on the body of the penguin. And uh, because it is selected on the modify panel, I can clearly see that uh, uh, we have two different modifiers attached to this model. Uh, the first one is a symmetry, but the visibility is turned off. So let me turn on the visibility by clicking on the eyeball. And uh, here I see the turbus boost, the effect of turbus boost as well. Uh, now, so what we will do is we will create the head for the penguin. Uh, from the left view, let me press L to turn to the left view. Let me press Alt X to make it see through. And uh, uh, let me go to the modify and uh, uh, in edit mode. So right now I'm in editable poly level and uh, uh, in edit mode. Now, what uh, maybe this annotation can help me. So, uh, yeah, drawing. All right. So here's a line. Oh, the color is blue. Let me switch to something else. So here's, a, here's this red line I was just drawing. So this represents the level of the recent polygon. Uh, our goal here is to build up the head. To build up the head, I will extrude this level, but in an angled way. So there will be another angle, there will be another angle, and the last one will appear here. So what I will do is, as this platform, as these uh, vertices are selected, I will extrude and rotate on the go. Okay, so this is what I will do. I will extrude and rotate on the go. So for now, because extrusion is usually a polygon operation, we have to switch to the polygon mode. So we will switch back and forth between vertex level and polygon level. When we are creating polygons, we are usually using the extrusion. So the goal here is to add volume, because right now we have the body, but we need more volume to create the head. Uh, so let me switch to polygon sub-object level and switch to perspective mode. Just by pressing P, I can turn to perspective, P. And the polygons I'm looking for, and I want to select are these top three polygons. So I'm just clicking on one and holding on control and add to the selection. So these are the selected polygons. And uh, what I should do is I just need a base extrusion. It won't be accurate. It won't be anything fancy. It is just a simple extrusion. So if you remember, we can have extrusions reach uh, from different locations. First one is here at the top. This is extrude. This is one option. The second option is in the edit polygons here, extrude option. And you can always choose right click and extrude. Time to time, because extrusion command is so so frequently used, well, there is a hotkey dedicated for this, and that is Shift E. So uh, if you uh, just forget, make a note for yourself. Please use Shift E as much as possible because it's a fairly commonly uh, used uh, hotkey. And as you see, because the command is active, it is highlighting here in blue. It is also highlighting here in blue, and we have an interactive cursor, and we can just change and make the extrusions. Now, extrusion is done, so I have to make an adjustment because this is just a pure extrusion. It's not shaped, it's not fitting to the silhouette. So what we need to do, what we did previous time, we are tracing the silhouette of the plane So how did we do that? We switched to left viewport, and the first thing was to push and pull in vertices. So we will switch back to vertex mode, that's okay. But right now, we are not just pushing vertices like this in a horizontal and, uh, and vertical ways. We will select all the top vertices in the top line, and we're switching to E, like element, uh, and that is for rotation. The goal here is, if, even if we are talking about vertices, those are points, when you have multiple points selected, 
you can actually rotate them as one unit. All right. So if you have a single point, there's there's no really a reason to rotate that single point. Yep, there are special circumstances, but usually a vertex is not really a good idea to a single vertex rotation. But if you have at least two vertices now, you will be able to rotate them as kind of a, an edge or, or a basic element. So when we have all these points selected, I can rotate them and create this, uh, let me tell this kind of a hoodie effect. So we are creating, we are creating an extrusion from the body and just like a hoodie, the geometry is following the shape of the figure. So you might ask, why are we just, why aren't we just pulling out and make the shape changes just like we did with the tracing? Because we are keeping in mind that this model should be useful for animation. And in animation, you have to follow the real life structure of the figure and the real life structure of the figure is the kind of a flexibility. So if you want to really move up and then to rotate the head, you have to follow the structure of the head. And this is why we should use this kind of a uh, hoodie uh, type of uh, uh, movement. So there is a slight canting. So I've added this up and I'm switching to move. W is the move mode, lifting these, uh, uh, vertices up and here comes something uh, I don't say it's a trick it is just a uh, one way to adjust points simultaneously is we can switch to scale mode the hotkey for scale mode is R or right click and you can choose scale rotate and move as you wish uh, so uh, and I'm just squeezing it down just Along the x-axis, I will pull this in and then switch to move and make my corrections. And again, the goal here is to trace the silhouette. So this point should be somewhere at the corner here. Here's, here's this little corner for the penguin. And this point is already at the back. So right now we are creating a diagonal uh, connection uh, here. And once it is done, we are switching again back to polygon mode, perspective, shift E for extrusion. We are making a tiny extrusion. And then we also have to go back, revert back to left viewport. So pressing L to left viewport and switching to uh, rotation. So I'm rotating, switching to scale, scale it down, squeeze it in, and now, we are trying to trace again the silhouette. So this was the base level. This was the first step. This is the second step. We are already somewhere around the chin and the top of the head for the figure. So that is our next, uh, the second step. And the, the third step will be actually this part. So that will be the last part of the head. So we are going back again, perspective, switching to extrusion, shift E, just make a base extrusion. We want to make the corrections. Corrections usually happen in front view, left view, because these are the accurate views. Press L to go to the left view, and I'm switching to E, rotation, and cant it to make it Actually, actually, in this case, it should be vertical. And switching to move W and switching to scale and pull it down and move it closer. All right. So now, as you see, there is a power line. There is this edge flow, and this edge flow is like following the shape of the penguin. Okay. So this is our goal. If you see an error or something, let, let me generate typical problems, typical issue. Typical issue is like uh, you are just uh, uh, moving away uh, some of the points accidentally. Uh, so what happens? How can you troubleshoot this? When you are watching this and you, are, you know that you are in left view. So anytime if you rotate it around and you see this orthographic, that's a no-no. It's not a left view. It is 
a autographic so it's a distortion free angle of view but it's not really a left one so you have to press l to return back to the left one. so how do i know i made an error it looks okay but i still know i made an error because if i check this power line that goes through here now i see there is something we have a, a full polygon here but here the polygon is just shrinked so what's going on this point should be somewhere else because the polygon that that's here should be visible and i still see here a similar issue so i have to select this point and watch it what else we always can check the front viewport for example let me go to the front view what can i recognize so if I turn on the show and result. This is the chemistry tool. So if I turn on the show and result and uh, see what I have as a full size model, I can see that, hey, it's not, it's not really a penguin hat. It is like a hammer. So it's just a flattened down version. It's way too wide compared to the original. Let me check the left view. Okay, what else? The height of the head is a bit off. So I definitely have to make some corrections. Correct it first here in the left viewport. So I will go and choose vertex because I don't want to select everything. I need only a part of the selection. So I will select these, these three points. Let me turn on show and result back on and pull them up. Can you see how the subdivided mesh, how the turbus loose mesh is following uh, uh, the way I uh, transform the basic geometry. So the base geometry will be slightly larger, but when we are getting our end result, that will be fairly uh, smooth out. So Turbo Smooth is working. Okay, now what else? The width. Let me go to perspective and see what's going on with the overall width. To fix this issue, I'm turning on the chemistry tool because I want to see the low resolution mesh. And I will select these points, these four points. If, if you are selecting any type of points in the 3D space, please make sure that you are using your rotation because rotation will give you feedback about the position of the points in the 3D space. If you don't use this Alt and Middle Mouse rotation, quite a lot you may get lost and you will not recognize okay where we are actually in the pretty space and this is why i like to rotate a lot it's not because i want to make you seasick uh it is just because uh one of the best ways to get some feedback and when i'm turning on this show and result now i see okay it's much bigger so what else should i do maybe i can drag these points rotate around Here's another point. Here's another point. Rotate around. Okay, these are the four I have selected. What happens if I'm pulling them closer? Yes, now the head is much more, uh, much more softer. What else can I do? Maybe I can select this point and this one and pull this a little bit tighter. Okay, that's it. That is that is my goal. All right. Now, the foundation of the head is ready we before we are moving on we have to check a couple things and this is about cleaning up possible geometrical issues this geometrical issue is usually happening along the line of symmetry so the line of symmetry is uh observed usually in the front view so let me go to the front view half and uh, i'm curious how this center is aligned now let me turn off the show and result and see what we actually have. And if your model, your model may be different. Uh, if you made an error, uh, you may recognize that some of the points are way too in, like this. And they are way over the line of symmetry. So if this happens, so if there's something wrong along the symmetry, it it ends up usually uh, creating kind of a negative or, uh, or a gap. So if you see anything like this, you have a gap or you have a welding issue, that's usually because something wrong along the symmetry. 
So to fix those, uh, we can choose and use a line. A line, it's not that visible here, but in the ribbon, in the modeling section, at the right side of the ribbon, there is a, uh, an X and Y and Z alignment. So we will use this one, but not yet. Just wait for a second. So let me turn off the show and result and see the pure model. This is the pure model. And uh, my goal here is to fix this misalignment of the points along the line of symmetry. So, but first for that, uh, I want to make it a little bit easier to select the points I want to regulate. Uh, how, do you see this cavity? This cavity is used to avoid uh, valving issues along the symmetry. Uh, the center polygons that you see here are created during the extrusion. So when we made the first extrusion of the base of the neck, then the extrude command automatically created the surrounding polygons inside as well. So I will select these polygons, these three, and press delete, delete button. Select this one, this one, and this one, and press delete again. I'm rotating around to check the model, and these three as well. So now the half of the model is fully opened, okay? This is very important for us because if it is fully opened, we can select the open edges with one click. These open edges are called and named uh, uh, borders. So in the sub-object level, in the edit table poly, uh, there is a border option. So when you click on borders, you can actually click and tap on the model's open edge. So where you see these uh, black polygons, that's, that's usually a, a hint of having an open edge because you can look inside the model. And usually the inside of, of the model is usually shown in black uh, because this is a facing of the polygon. Uh, so when you are in border mode, you can go up here at the planner option and choose planner to X, align to X. X is the horizontal. Okay, so when you are aligning X, that means you are aligning these points to this direction and flatten them out. Okay, so this is what we do. Align to X, and now everything is perfect. But you should know that this alignment is uh, using an average number. So if we have multiple points and one point is way inside, one point is a little bit out, when we are making this alignment, this will do. So it will create an average. Now, this average, it means you have the points in line, but if the symmetry is here, it may happen that even if the points are aligned, they are a little bit off compared to the center. Aligned, but off. So to fix this, once you have clicked on X, so everything is aligned, then you should take a look at the bottom of this X axis and press a right click to set it to zero and now we can make sure that, okay, everything is lined and everything falls back in place right in the center. So if you had any issues with the symmetry, uh, this process usually solves the problem. Okay, so what's up next? We want to create the beak uh, of the penguin, but we want to actually create a gap for the map. We, we will not animate this penguin, but it will look much more uh, believable if we have top and the bottom parts separated. So we still, we will still use extrusion, but uh, it is a little bit different because instead of extruding all three facing front polygons, we will choose only two. So the top and the bottom will be extruded and then we will be able to create the beam. So for that, bef before I jumping in, uh, I wanna make some corrections like shaping. So let me select these points and pull it a little bit closer. I don't need any, I don't need that big of a gap. Pull it down, pull it here. Okay, let me check it from the left viewport. All right, maybe pull this back slightly. Okay, 
So what I will do is select the top and the bottom polygon and extrude and extrude them as one and go to left viewport and check what, what's happening here. Okay, this is promising, but it, it still requires some adjustment. Why? Because definitely it's way too open. Right, so I was turning on the show and result, and it's, I clearly see there's too much gap here. That's actually, uh, we want to blow through here. It's just a, a, like a bridge, so it's way too big. What I have to do is go to vertex level and select the points and pull them closer. So I'm carefully selecting the points. Be careful when you are selecting these points, you are actually selecting four points in free space, okay? So if you, uh, if you struggle and if you have to, uh, if you need more feedback, uh, you can use the Alt W to check the four viewport uh, view. So you can check what's going on on the left, selecting these four points on the left. And if you need feedback, you can go in and look the perspective viewport to check if you actually select those four points and then uh, you can pull this. All right, now the gap is closer and tighter. So uh, I can move on uh, to create the further extrusions. So polygon mode is selected again because creating volume is usually happening in polygon mode. So shift E, uh, the hotkey for extrusion, extrude it. Not much. I'm not interested in creating too big of an extrusion because I can uh, just go to the left viewport and uh, switch the move and I can move it as it is. All right, so there's no goal creating uh, very accurate extrusions here. You're just, you just want to make an extrusion and then you, will, you have to make the adjustments anyway. All right, so let me pull this back. Uh, let me switch to vertex mode because I want to make the adjustments. So definitely these two points, these, these are the two points I'm selecting. These points should be lift off. This one should be way up higher. The center is actually, these are four points. So I've selected here. This one is also four points. So two in outside and two inside. I will lift that up. The stop one a little bit closer to the bottom. This one still needs and going to the perspective and it's time to face with the truth. So what is uh, what is the possible issue? Uh, it is about symmetry. So every time you progress forward, so every time you create a small extrusion, uh, now you have a part of the bead, part of the head. Don't forget to check how does it look when it's welded, when it's smoothed out, when it is in 3D space. So we are working in, on our adjustments in the lab report, but we have to frequently check what's going on in the 3D space. So let me go on and show and results turn on. And what the hell is happening here? So this is a typical issue. I was making everything fine and right, still there is something happening. So how could it happen? Uh, first of all, we have two issues here. Let me maximize the viewport, all W, and uh, uh, let, me, let me explain what's going on. So the first thing is to recognize what the issue is. So before you're freaking out, I know this, so I've been on that. Uh, when, when you see something like this, then okay, what is the actual problem? The actual problem is, first, the beak is way too wide. So yes, I definitely have to narrow it down to make it a little bit more pointy. This is issue one. The second issue is because these are not welding, of course, I have two, the top part and the bottom part. So this, I, I understand that at least I have two separate forms, but I have four here. Why? Because these are not welding in the center. All right, so this is why uh, it looks like this. So this welding issue could be a result of offsetting. So we are not really dead center. And it could be 
an issue of an inside polygon. So to solve this problem, uh, we'll turn off the show and results and look around the inside. And these polygons are present. Why? Extrusion. Extrusion will create the polygons inside as well, despite we don't need it. So what we will do, we will select it manually, carefully. These are four polygons. We just have two steps. So one step, two polygons, two step, four polygons, and press delete to delete them. That's the only thing I've changed. I have not aligned anything. I was not using a line X, nothing. So let me turn on show and results and instantly it fixes my problem. Just because I left four polygons there and four polygons suggested to the symmetry modifier that that shouldn't be valid, it was treating them as separate parts, okay? But once you delete the polygons, now symmetry knows that, okay, we have open edges, so we can actually weld them together properly. All right, so this, the, the second issue, the first issue actually is still there, the width, the overall width. So what I have to do is just go in here and uh, try to make a correction. The, my problem here, and probably you see something similar, and we see way too many edges. There's so many edges, I can barely see what's going on and what I should select. So what I have to do, I have to just uh, get rid of this. So I'm choosing F4. So edges faces is turned off. F4, function key four. And now I can, I can clearly see the uh, original mesh shown uh, with orange. Okay, so that's uh, the orange is usually the sign of the original, the, the color of the original mesh, even if you see the end result. Okay, so the end result uh, is there. Turbo smooth is uh, applied, so it's clearly visible. But uh, what we see here is the control mesh. So F4, and then I'll switch to vertex mode and rotate around to get information. So when I'm starting rotating, uh, this is the moment when I can recognize, okay, what should I grab? So I definitely should grab these two points and pull them closer. Maybe this top point and the bottom point, so that's actually four points. If you don't know how many points you selected, let me give you a hint. Uh, in the selection area, every time you select a point or any kind of an element, it will tell you that how many of them are selected. So if you think that you have selected one and it's, it tells you you selected eight, that's a hint, okay, something going on here. So this number uh, is fine now. And I'm pulling this back, selecting these two points, moving them closer and selecting this top and pulling those closer as well. Okay, maybe this one too. All right, now it is, it becomes thinner and thinner. And when I'm turning back on the show and result, uh, I will be able to see uh, that, okay, now it's much more believable as a beak. Okay, please recognize that we are not progressing with exclusions all the time. Okay, so. Uh, one or two extrusion at a time and don't go further until it is not uh, perfected and not uh, adjusted accurately. Okay, if you start extruding the speak early on, it's just, you will get like a long, like Pinocchio nose long beak and uh, it will generate so many things to adjust, it will be much harder. But if you have the foundation uh, adjusted, then, the further progress is much more controllable. So let me turn on show and results. This is the tip of the beak. I'm switching to extrusion. Make a tiny extrusion. Again, process is the same. They're going back to left view. Switch to move mode. Make a correction. Switch to vertex mode, selecting only the bottom vertices. Pull this up. Top vertices. Pull them down, go it on here, and 
check it in perspective. Yeah, it opens up. All right, I'm not worried about this. Why? Because I already know that the polygon that was created inside that causes the problem. So I'm selecting, deleting, and now it's valid properly. Okay, so this is what I have. Uh, maybe these points should be pulled closer. Ah, that's my mistake. I was selecting this point, two. Okay, and go to polygon level and create another extrusion. So shift E. And maybe I will just switch to scale mode, scale it down, and pull it until it welds. And that will be the last. Okay, so I will select this inside polygons, hitting on delete, and go for the left viewports. Actually, I can grab these and pull them out a little bit more. And if I want to make uh, more segments, what should I do? So if I forgot to add segments, for example, I've created the whole length and I, I want and need to insert more. It is all about Smith loop. Okay, remember we used Swift loop previously right now for make tiny corrections. Why not? So Swift loop is active and I'll place a segment here, place a segment here, and now I'm ready to select these and lift these up and make an adjustment. Press set and look look what we have. Okay. So uh, that's that is the practical approach of creating beak. Even mine is not perfect, so uh, if you want to make it nice and clean, uh, you have to spend the time with it. So even if the model itself, this is what you see. So it's not, it's not a complex model. It is fairly clean. Uh, it's easy to follow. Even at this low level, it takes some time to, to find two things. Uh, but what else? What's, what's up next? the eyes so my goal here is to place the eyeballs uh, but the big question is where to place them and how to prepare the surface to create the eye socket so if you remember previous time what we did we carefully selected the area we actually created a polygon to be able to make the ring so we should pay and focus our attention to create the to create the polygon and uh, uh, recognize the polygon for uh, that's uh, that should be good for the eyeball. So this polygon will be, in my case, uh, this polygon will be this one. Okay, so I want to select this polygon and uh, make a few changes. So let me pull this corner a little bit down, uh, pull this a little bit up, push this to the bottom. So I want to place the eye. Uh, on this uh, polygon. Now, what should I do? As you see, the polygon, this polygon is a little bit out of shape. Uh, what does it mean? If you want to create a nice rounded circular eye socket, the original polygon that you, that you try to uh, turn it uh, into an eye socket should be somewhat square. Okay, so this polygon is not square. If I create an eye socket with inset or, or, or a negative extrude, the eye socket will be shaped. Some cases it is good, but because this is a full rounded eyeball, we want to create a perfect uh, square. So to do that, we're switching to polygon mode. So polygon mode, and this is the polygon I want to adjust and want to use it as the center of the eye. So the polygon is there, uh, but what I need to create is an inset. So right click and choose inset and create a tiny inset. Uh, if it is hard to do it with a mouse, so let me, let me show this So uh, before, before we are jumping in. So there is a tendency with inset. So you're jumping in 
and start holding the left mouse, sometimes you see that it's overdoing the, the, the setting. So anytime, if you experience this inset is a little bit weird, and instead of creating a tiny inset of polygon, it is just flipping over things, uh, use the inset with settings option. So instead of uh, the simple inset, I will use right click and inset with setting from the pop-up menu, so inset with setting, and manually adjust the value. Okay, so just drag this down and make sure that this is, this is fitting to the needs. And I want to create a nice thin frame around the polygon, all right? So because right now I'm not worried about uh, creating a so strong inset. And don't forget, uh, you have to accept the dialogue, all right? So you have to click on the checker, you have to accept the dialogue, otherwise it will not, it will not make a big difference. It will just revert back to the original, so you have to accept it. And now we have the polygon. And here comes the trick. Instead of manually pushing these points and try to find uh, something that is squarish, I will go undo and select the polygon itself and look at the top of uh, uh, the ribbon. So if you don't see the ribbon, please make sure that you, are, you see this. Uh, this is the toggle off ribbon. And if the ribbon is not showing up, you, but you see the uh, letters of the tabs of modeling freeform selection. Um, there's a chance that this is minimized. So if you experience something that's closed up, you can hit on show for ribbon, wait for a couple of seconds. It takes time to load in, and then you will be able to look for in the modeling section, look for geopoly. So geopoly is uh, a tool that universally turns everything into a perfect uh, elemental shape. So if it, if it is a four-sided polygon, it will be a perfect square, etc. So if it's a stop sign, uh, it will be turned to that. So geometry, geopoly, and now we have the square, and I can use my scale and shrink it down and even rotate if I wish. But right now, my goal is to create a. I can, I can directly create an extrusion. So Shift E, and extrude it inwards. And here we go. So we have an eye socket created. Okay. So if the position of the eyeball is off, and you want to alter it, this is what you can do. So particle level is active. Uh, I don't have the show end result turned on, so there's nothing there. The bottom polygon is selected, and uh, the trick is real, uh, hides in the selection. So one single polygon, if it is selected, you are just altering that. But if you want to move the whole eye socket, you have to enlarge the selection by using the grow function. So you can use grow in the selection menu, so grow. If you hit once, it will select neighboring polygons. If you, if you hit it again, it will select furthermore. So when I'm clicking it twice, it will select first the framing polygons and then the other uh, border polygons. And now I can rotate this whole eye socket as one unit. So let me switch to move mode and I can lift this up. Uh, maybe pull that in. Uh, if I want to alter or change the orientation, maybe the penguin ass. That's this, this was this was looking good. Okay, so I can click away, and now that um, we have we have the eye sockets for the polygon. All right, maybe the beak is a little, little bit jaggy, so let me select the points here. And pull in. Okay, it looks a little bit odd to have that kind of a jag here and there. All right. Perspective set. That's it. So we have the eye socket and we have the beaks. And of course, if you want, you can create spheres for the eyeballs. Uh, you can create multiple spheres or you can use symmetry modifier on top of it. All right. But this is time to look for the feet. Okay. Because I want to show you how feet, feet should be, feet and hands should be treated. And uh, also, what is the logic when you are creating figures? Because 
the extrusion of a, a complete head is different. When you are extruding and creating a forearm, uh, you are extruding a bunch of polygons as one unit. But when you are creating the fingers, you are creating fingers simultaneously, but these are independent extrusions. Okay, so I will uh, walk through this just in a second. Okay. So, uh, the, the model of the feet will be a separated model. Uh, so what is the foundational shape that we should use? It could be a box, uh, but right now, because uh, a box is only four-sided, like, so we have, we have at least three figures uh, here, because the penguins has this three figure protruding towards the face. So these elongated figures uh, sh um, require foundation. So at least one square for one figure, two square and three squares for the three figures. So if we have a box, it's really hard to create kind of a three or four figure uh, platform. So we will use a cylinder for that. Once you create it, it will be easier to recognize what we, what, what's the logic here. So let me go to create and look for a cylinder. So creation panel, cylinder is selected. And uh, I'm, I'm in perspective mode right now because that will give uh, the, the most information. And uh, this will be a right foot. So I will place it somewhere on the right side. So I'm not super accurate. I'm just dropping it here and extruding it. And it remembers my previous settings. So let me dial this back to the original. Because this is, this is the foundational uh, cylinder. So F4 function before again, the edge of faces option. This is what it shows. And this is a typical cylinder. So this will be good, but as it is now, it's not. It's way too dense. Uh, sounds a little bit off, but what is it actually about? Right now, the default cylinder has 18 different side polygons. And we can uh, select, my goal here is to, I want to select three polygons and create three figures from those three polygons. But if I have 18, that means I need to trick myself and select two polygons for one figure and another two for another figure, and that can just mess up things. We want to make it as easy as possible. For that, if I reduce the number of sides to six, this is what happens. So I have a very basic uh, kind of an ankle without the feet and without fingers yet. But, uh, but if, if this is the direction of the, uh, of the fingers, then I can select this polygon here, this polygon here, and this polygon here, and I can extrude them as one unit and then I can extrude them as fingers. So the sixth side is okay. If I wanna create more figures, like uh, I wanna create, uh, for example, uh, four figures, maybe I should choose sides eight, and I can select this polygon here, this polygon here, and that's the second, this polygon here, and that's the third, and this one here, and that's the fourth. So if I wanna create four figures, but because I'm only creating three, six sides will be enough. And then the, the other value I need to adjust is uh, probably the height segments, the five is an overkill. We don't need it. So let me crank this down and set it to three. Now three is pretty good. Uh, uh, if Even if, if I want more, I can later on add on more easily. But uh, as you see in the reference, uh, this is fairly short, so this is this is not really a long uh, uh, angle uh, right there. So once we have the foundational cylinder, we can right click and convert it into an editable poly. So editable poly, or you can right click here and convert to editable poly. That's technically the same. 
uh, and now we are ready to edit. So we can go into polygon mode, and these are the polygons. Just let me let me change the color of the model because it's just so hard to recognize which one is which because red is the color of selection. So, uh, so I have these three polygons selected. And my goal here is to create the feet, and then I will create the toes. So uh, as it is, there's nothing fancy here. I just have an extrusion. That's okay. That's great. But this is a single unit extrusion. So I have three polygons selected, but these three polygons are extruded as one group. The the difference will be when we are trying to extrude these independently because we want to create figures. Now, to clean up the foundation, to organize uh, the, uh, the polygon shapes, we have to flatten them out. So I'm switching to scale mode. R is the hotkey for scaling, or you can press right click and go to scale mode, or at the top here, you can press select a uniform scale. And along the y-axis, so this is the y-axis, the green one, I'm pulling this and it will, the, the arched polygon structure is flattened down. So, and as you flatten this down, uh, the polygon sizes will reveal the differences. So what does it mean? So here we are. Now we have the polygons are quite similar in size, but as I'm flattening this down even further, even further, so I'm grabbing, I'm selecting and flattening it more, selecting and flattening it more. It's like an ironing of the clothing. So uh, that's what we do here. Uh, now it's visually appealing that, hey, there is a difference in the polygon sizes. So to fix that, I'm just selecting the center polygon and shrink it down along the x-axis. So if it's too wide, I will shrink it down along the x-axis. Uh, these three polygons, if these are even, if the size of the polygons are uniform, that means I will be, it will be easier to uh, create uniform looking toes, uniform looking figures uh, uh, afterwards. All right, so if, you, if your goal is to create somewhat believable head, feet, whatever, you should take care of the foundation of polygons and the foundation of polygons should be somewhat similar in size and uh, the aspect ratio. So uh, we still have an issue, and that is the overall length of these polygons. So these polygons are stretched out uh, in the top way. So I have to select the Z axis scale it down slightly, scale it until I reach a point where these are actually squarish. Okay, so these are not 100% square, but these are square as, as required. Okay, now toes. So let's create the toes. Yes, we want to use extrusion. Yeah, that's, that's correct. But extrusion method will be different. And to access to that method to reach to the uh, ex uh, extrusion process, we have to use extrusion with settings. If you remember, every time when we are using with settings option, you have to choose this window type of extrusion. So extrude, instead of just clicking on extrude, I will choose the window here, settings, or right click, extrude, and beside the extrude command, if you walk out, you see that tiny window that is selection extrude with settings. And here comes the trick. At the top of this selector, at the top of this dialog, we have some kind of an interactive option, and that is about changing the extrusion type. So if you click on the arrow, it will bring up the variations. First one is group. When you have group, all three polygons will be extruded as one unit. We did it with the head, okay? So it will, it will be the same. Why, why is it wrong? Because 
you want to you can't move the figures uh, separated so group is not an option local normal may be an option but local normal is following the polygon structure so what does it mean imagine that i have two polygons and i want to extrude them if i'm choosing simple group extrusion will be looking like this so it will create an offset extrusion if i'm choosing a uh, local normal it will extrude like this so it will keep it as one unit but it will offset respective to the or orientation of the polygon in the free space so if it's uh angled it will try to maintain an angle with the extruded but if you're switching to by polygon it will tear it off and create separate strands of extrusion and that's what we're looking for so we are choosing polygon and uh hit it okay and now i will be able to move it and move it aside okay it's not not an easy thing to understand so i will do it a different way too so let me go back and let me make a slight change right now the polygons are flattened out so if i want to visually uh, if, if I need help visually about this extrusion because I don't understand clearly what's going on, I'm selecting the center polygon and pulling this out a bit. And this way I'm creating an angle. So now I'm selecting all three polygons and choose extrude with setting. And now you will be able to see the difference a little bit better. So option first as group. Now this is what we have as group. Option second is as local normal so it's still a group but it is trying to follow the underlying structure of the foundational polygon and the third option is by polygon and now because i have some angle of the foundational polygons one finger will be extruded in this direction the other finger to that direction okay that's it practically so i have this one and now I'm just switching to simple extrusion and extrude it. And if I want to make some changes, uh, for example, I want to make um, fingernails, what I should do, here's a little trick. You can actually use multiple polygons at the same time and handle them uh, kind of individually. So a small extrusion, pulling it back with move, switching to scale, and using scan and pull this down then i can create a very small extrusion even negative but it's just a tiny one and extrude again and scale it down okay so uh it will be a nice nail claw it's not really a nail it's a claw uh but you get it all right so uh this is the the idea of creating a leg uh if you want to create shoes uh that's fairly similar the only difference when you're creating a shoe you don't have to worry about uh the uh by polygon extrusion so you don't want to separate it so if, if your goal is to create a shoe, then uh, the only thing you will do is just extrude two times, for example, and then you will start shaping the shoe. Uh, so uh, let me just go with this cylinder and extrude and then convert right click and do the poly. And okay, it's too much. Control, control, shift E, extrude, and shift E again. And so if I want, uh, I can make a, can make a change. So like this. So and practically that's it. If you want to lift, lift this up, you can lift this up. All right, it's, it's, it's fairly easy to generate a shoe. Um, you can actually select this area, pull this down, uh, switch the polygon mode, select the polygon, go inset. Uh, make a small inset, extrude, and now you have you have kind of a shape. Okay, and of course you can still go in and add the turbo smooth and check what's going on, right? 
Okay, so if you want to create a very basic shoe or very basic uh, kind of sock-like uh, uh, feet, uh, that's the, that's how it's done. All right, let me delete this. And here comes a big question, still a big question, is uh, how to mirror the feet uh, and how to uh, fix possible issues uh, with the mirror. Because there will be issues with the mirror. A typical one, uh, because the pivot point of the model is a little bit uh, off compared to the center of the figure. So what does it mean? Uh, when you have this uh, food selected, the center of the foot is right now, it's matched to the original center of the cylinder. And when you are applying uh, from the modifier list, so I have a drop down list and pressing S, to look for symmetry. So when I'm applying the symmetry, uh, can you see the arrows? The symmetry is there. So when you apply symmetry, it will appear and uh, it will do something because, because it's clearly, if you press F4, there's clearly a line. So if I'm turning off the visibility, it is clearly cutting through the whole leg. But we don't want to cut this through. We want to create one and mirror to the other side. So what we have to do is to select the center of symmetry that is called a mirror plane. So we want to select the mirror plane and move it actually to make it fit to the center because right now it's off. So to access to the mirror plane, it is an edit kind of function. So edit is usually happening on sub-object level. So I have to find out, I have to get a grip on a mirror type of sub-object. So for that, I will look for the symmetry because that belongs, that should belong to the symmetry and open up this triangle. And when the triangle is opened up, now the sub-object level becomes available. So it reveals itself and there's mirror. So I can click on the mirror and now I'm able to move the center of mirror. Uh, I will move along the x-axis. Now, this is what happens. If I move it to this direction, oh, congratulations, I have two feet. That's good. Uh, but it is, it is not in the center of the figure. So what I should do, maybe I can turn it to the opposite. But here comes the, the big question. So why these are disappearing? Because the orientation of the mirroring is not right to left, and I have a right foot, so I want to mirror it to the left. It is exactly the opposite. So left is mirrored to the right, but there is no leg on the left. So the emptiness is mirrored to the right side, and that is erasing uh, the right foot. So what I should do, the magical flip. So when flip is done, then boom, X is okay, X mirror is okay, but it was just not uh, perfect. If you want to make it super duper accurate, um, you have to uh, go down, mirror is still active, so we are still in some object mode, this was still active, and uh, along the X axis, uh, I'm pressing or right click on the arrows, and that will actually reset the values here. So instead of 0 0.023, right click and it will snap that center. So now I can be sure that everything is uh, matching fine. Okay. Of course, if you want to connect the body with the feet, you have to select uh, the body, select a polygon, maybe stretch it out a bit and create an inset and create extrusion or we don't even need an inset just extrude it and create an inset now and shift e to put it in and pull it back so now we have kind of a cavity and we still can apply a turbo smooth on it. 
Okay, the thickness uh, actually is not really respecting uh, the uh, geometry reference here. So I can go back and still make adjustments like uh, uh, selecting uh, these vertices and scale them up. Okay, so I can create something like this. Uh, actually, I can move them as one unit. So I, if I want to create some kind of a, an off center, I can do it. Uh, even, uh, even if I wish, I can go down and select elements. Elements are the biggest chunks of geometry within any table poly. So if we have a single model that was created uh, from a cylinder in this case, that means when I'm hitting on element, I can select everything, and then I will be able to rotate as one unit. So make, a, make an adjustment for myself. So if I want to uh, change the position of the feet like this, I can do it. And because the mirror is active, everything will be uh, flowing. Okay, so that that's that was about technique for today.